All right, so this is pre-E 4.4, which is rational exponents. Um, we have a few log problems where we have to know how to go in between fraction exponents and radical form. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly go over um, how, to, how to switch between the two forms. So when you have a rational exponent, um, the numerator of your rational exponent represents the power. The denominator of your rational exponent represents the root. So notice here, if I have x to the a over b, this is the same thing as x to the a power, and then we're going to take the b root of it. Okay? Or we can do it in the opposite order. We can take the b root of x and then raise it to the a power. And I want to say 9 times out of 10, this is the one that we'll use, um, but it really just depends on the situation. Okay, so power over root, power's on top, root's on the bottom. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Um, notice it says, write your solution with positive exponents. So I want to go ahead and scroll down here just a little bit. I have 4 to the 1 half. So remember, the top one is my power, the bottom one is my root. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the square root of 4, and then I'm raising it to the first power. Okay, and then we just simplify. The square root of 4 we know is 2. 2 to the first power is 2. Okay, let's look at another one. On this one, we have 16 to the 3 fourths power. So 3 is our power, 4 is our root, which means we're taking the fourth root of 16, and whatever that equals, we're going to raise it to the third power. Now, if you don't know what the fourth root of 16 is, you can prime factor 16. 16 is the same as 4 times 4, and each of these 4s is 2 times 2. So anytime you have a fourth root, that means you need four copies of a number in order to bring that number out of a fourth root radical. So notice here, I have four copies of a 2, which means that the fourth root of 16 is just 2. And then I apply my power. Okay, so I'm going to cube 2. 2 cubed is 8. Okay, let's look at another one. Same idea here. Top number represents my power. Bottom number represents my root. So I'm doing the square root of 49, and then whatever that equals, I'm going to cube it. Okay. So 49, we know the square root is 7, and then 7 cubed gives me 343. Okay. Now I do. I want to go ahead and put a little side note. We could do it the other way, right? We could do 49 cubed and whatever that equals, then take the square root of it. But if we do that, 49 cubed is a humongous number, right? And if it's not a perfect square, that's not a big number that I want to start prime factoring. So that's why I normally do the root first if it comes out nicely and then apply the power. Let's look at another one. This was the same idea. The only difference is we have a negative exponent. When we have a negative exponent, the first thing we need to move is um, the base with the negative exponent so that we have a positive exponent, and then we can simplify. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, move across the fraction line to get a positive exponent. So right now my fraction line is underneath the 32, so I'm going to go ahead and move the 32 down, which gives me 1 over 32 now to the positive 2 fifths. Again, this is my power, this is my root, okay. so I have 1 over, I'm taking the square root, I'm sorry, I'm taking the fifth root, I'm taking the fifth root of 32, and whatever that equals, I'm squaring it. Now again, if you don't know what the fifth root of 32 is, we can prime factor this. Um, 32 is uh, 2 times 16, 16 is 2 times 8, 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So notice here we have 5 copies of a 2, which means that the fifth root of 32 is 2. And then I need to square that, which means I end up with 1 fourth. Okay, let's look at some that have some variables in them. We work them the same way. Here again, we have a negative exponent, 
So we need to take this whole base and move it down to the denominator so that my exponent is positive. So I have 1 over x to the 10th, y to the 12th, now to the positive 1 half power. Remember this represents power over root. So that means I'm taking the square root of x to the 10th, y to the 12th. Okay. When I take the square root, um, uh, remember I'm just saying for each two copies of the variable I can bring one out. The shortcut way is to see how many times will this exponent, or sorry, this root go into the exponent. So 2 goes into 10 five times, which means we can bring out an x to the fifth. 2 goes into 12 six times, which means we can bring out a y to the sixth. If it doesn't go in evenly, then whatever your remainder is, that's what's left under your radical. Okay. Let's get another one. Same idea here. Here are my negative exponents on the bottom, so I'm going to move it up first, which gives me a, b to the one-third power. So my power is 1, and my root is 3. So that means I'm taking the cube root of AB and then raising it to the first power. Now here I can't take the cube root of AB because cube root says that I need three copies of a number to bring that number out. Here I only have one copy of A and one copy of B. So I just leave this as the cube root of AB. Okay. Let's look at a couple more. On this one, okay, power's on top roots on bottom. So I'm taking the cube root of x to the eighth power. Now notice here I went ahead and put the power underneath. Let me write it without that. Normally we do the cube root first and then we raise it to the eighth power, right? But here it looks like we can't simplify because I only have one x, right? And it says I need three copies of an x to bring one out. So the way it's written it's not really conducive to the way we want to solve this. So I'm going to do the other option where I do x to the 8th first and then take the cube root of it. Okay, So now I have 8 x's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And a cube root says for every 3 copies I can bring 1 copy out. So here's a copy of an x, here's a copy of an x, and I have 2 left over. So what this tells me is that I can bring out an x squared and I have 2 x's left over under the cube root. Okay. Remember how last time we said how many times will this root go into this power? The same thing, you can work it like that. You can say 3 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6, which leaves me with 2 left over. However many times it goes in, that's how many come out. Okay. Whatever your leftover is, that's how many copies stay in the radical. Okay. If it goes in evenly, then obviously you don't have a radical left over because you wouldn't have a remainder. I'm going to put in one more little example here. If I had something like, uh, let's see, x cubed y to the 8th raised to the 1 fourth power, something like that. Okay. Again, this represents power. The bottom number is my root, which means I'm going to take the fourth root of x cubed y to the eighth, and then whatever that equals, I'm going to raise it to the first power, which the first power means I just, you know, get what I'm left with. So here, if I want to simplify, notice I have a fourth root, but I only have three copies of x. So if I only have three copies, four doesn't go into three, which means that I can't take any x's out. But if I look at my y's, four goes into eight two times, right? So that means I can bring out a y squared and then underneath my fourth root, I still have my x cubed. Okay. All right, so that's the end of pre-E 4.4. Um, you are now able to do the worksheet that corresponds to this section, which needs to be scanned um, and emailed to me or faxed in by the due date. Let me know if you have any questions.